This lesson is all about curved graphs and how to draw them. If you can get your title, grade and date in. The first question we're going to have a look at is y equals 2x squared plus 1. Whenever you're doing uh, curved graphs, first thing you're going to need is a table of values. For all of the questions I'm going to do today, I would suggest using x values going from minus 3 up to 3. All you need to do to work out the numbers that are going to go onto the y row of that table is we're going to take each of these numbers one at a time and substitute them in to our equation. So I'm going to start with the positive numbers just because it's a little bit easier to start with positive numbers. So let's start with x is 3. All I need to do, I'm going to write out the first couple to get us started, is I'm going to replace the letter x with the number 3. So just remember that this would mean 2 times 3 squared plus 1. At this point the most important thing that we need to remember is that we do the squared first. So we've got 3 squared is 9 times by 2 is 18 plus 1 is 19 so for the 3 I'd put the number 19 there. For 2, we do the same thing. If x is 2, we would have 2 squared, which is 4, times that by 2, which would give me 8, and then add on the 1, so 9. So I'd put 9 just underneath the 2. If x was 1, we'd use the same process. x squared, so 1 squared is 1. Times by 2 is 2, add on another 1 would give us 3. If x is 0, we would have 0 squared, which is 0, times by 2, that's still 0, add on 1, that would give us a value of 1. So that's the positive and 0 values done. We now need to have a look at the negative numbers. Key thing here that we've got to remember, whenever you square a negative number, it will always give us a positive answer. Because if you square a negative number, it would mean you are doing negative times a negative, therefore a positive answer. Just be very careful if you use a calculator at any point with these questions, because your calculator, if you type in minus 1 squared, for instance, like so, would square the 1 and then put a minus in front of the answer, which is incorrect. So, minus 1 squared is 1, times by 2 would give us 2, plus 1 is 3. So I'll put in a value just underneath the minus 1 of 3. For minus 2, again, replacing the letter x with minus 2, minus 2 times minus 2 is 4, times by 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So I can put 9 just there. You may notice a little bit of a pattern going on here. We've got some symmetry with the numbers. So let's just check and make sure it does the same with the last one. So minus 3. So if you replace the letter x with minus 3, we get minus 3 squared, so minus 3 times minus 3, which is 9, times that by 2 is 18, and then add 1 gives us 19. At this point, what I'd expect you to do is to then draw axes in your exercise book. The y-axis is going to have to go up to 19 and as low as 0, because we're not going to leave it just at 1. And your x-axis is going to have to go from minus 3 to 3. What you need to do is have something that looks a little bit like an inside, upside down T or an inverted T. What you're going to end up with when you've plotted all your points and joined them with a single smooth curve is probably something that looks a little bit like this. I'll leave you to do that a little bit neater and more accurate than I have. For section two, some of the questions get a little bit trickier. Here's an example where we've got an x squared, x and a number term within the equation. I'm going to do the exact same table of values for this one. So let's have a look. 
If I again start with the positive numbers, I'm going to show you by substituting in what we would need to work out. Just remember, this now has three terms within the equation that we need to work out. So it's probably going to be quite useful to actually substitute and write down what we are substituting here. So if we got that x is 3, that would mean we need to do 3 squared plus 3 times 3 minus 2. So all I've done is replace the letter x at each point with the number 3. So 3 squared is 9 plus 3 times 3, also 9, minus 2. So then 9 plus 9 is 18. Take away 2 is 16. So I put 16 underneath the number 3. For 2, we would do the same thing. 2 squared plus, because it's 3x, that means I would need to do 3 times 2, and then take away 2. 2 squared is 4, just working this bit out now, plus 3 times 2, which is 6, and take away 2 at the end. Don't forget that part. 4 plus 6 is 10. Take away 2 would give us 8. So I can put 8 underneath the number 2. Same idea again for 1. So 1 squared plus 3 lots of 1. So 3 times 1. Take away 2. 1 squared is 1. Plus 3 times 1. So 3. And then take away 2. So that's going to give us 1 plus 3, which is 4. Take away 2, which is 2. So let's put the number 2 there. For 0, I'm not going to write this one down for the pure fact. If you put x is 0, we would have 0 squared, which is nothing. Plus 3 lots of 0, still nothing. Take away 2. So 0 will just leave us with minus 2. Now here is where we need to be careful. Because there will be some form of symmetry, but it won't necessarily be in the middle with this question. Because of the fact that we've got this term here in the middle of the equation. So if I do the same now with minus 1. So minus 1 squared plus 3 times 1, or 3 times minus 1 should I say, so plus 3 times minus 1, take away 2, like so. So minus 1 squared, remember negative number squared always gives us a positive answer. So minus 1 squared would give us 1, plus 3 times minus 1 gives us minus 3. And take away 2 at the end. Just be careful. We've now got 1 add minus 3. Now that, remember, is the same as 1 take away 3. So minus 2. Take away another 2. So that would give us minus 4. We now need to do the same with minus 2. So we've got minus 2 squared plus 3x. So 3 lots of minus 2. And take away another 2. So minus 2 squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, plus 3 times minus 2 gives us minus 6, and the take away 2 at the end. 4 add minus 6, 4 add your minus 6 would give you minus 2, because it's the same as just doing 4 take away 6. So this is minus 2, take away another 2. So altogether, minus 4. We've only got one number left. I'm going to predict that here is where we get a little bit of symmetry. Let's just check and find out. So we've got the x is minus 3. So we get minus 3 squared. Plus 3 lots of minus 3. And then take away 2 at the end, just like with all the other bits. Minus 3 squared. So negative 3 times negative 3 gives us 9, plus 3 times minus 3 would give us minus 9, and take away 2 at the end. So here, 9 add minus 9 
is 0, because it's the same as 9 take away 9. So 0 take away 2 will give us minus 2. If you can now have a go at all the questions on the curved graphs worksheet, you're going to have two lessons to try and work your way through all of these. Some of them are more complex, so just take your time, show you're working, and if in absolute doubt, you can cheat a little bit and use your calculator. The only thing I would suggest if you are going to use a calculator, if you are substituting a negative number in, every time you write that negative number, I would advise popping it into a little bracket before you do any work with it.